Welcome back to Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. I'm personal financial planner, columnist, and financial therapist, Rick Kaler. Research tells us that 90% of all financial decisions are made emotionally, not logically. For nearly four decades, I've been helping people make better money decisions. So what makes my financial worldview different from most financial experts? I blend the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Good money decisions are not just about the money. So let's get started with today's episode. Welcome back to another episode. I don't know that most of you know or even in the area to hear that I do a segment on South Dakota Public Broadcasting once a month. The show is called In the Moment and the host is Lori Walsh, who is a phenomenal interviewer. She is so super engaged in the topic and I have just... um, really delighted in our on-air, well, our off-air conversations. So usually uh, her producer will ask me, what would you like to talk on? And typically I'll select something around a recent column that I've written to that can be linked to and uh, expand on the emotional uh, aspect of that as much as possible. But every once in a while, they asked me to address something. So uh, in a recent uh, um, segment, they asked me to address the emotions around student loan forgiveness, especially for those who had no debt or did not qualify for such programs. And it was interesting because I um, did some immediate reflection I think maybe I found that out a couple days ahead ahead of time. And it's nothing I've ever written anything on. So uh, as I uh, told them, we created the column (laughs) on the air because there there was no column written for them to link to. And I thought it was um, interesting. You know, oftentimes when I am pondering a topic, I go into it with with doing some research on it and I begin writing and I somewhat think through my fingertips as I'm writing and I can't tell you how many times I've gotten done writing something and I have the reaction, hmm, I didn't know that I believed that. Um, so some of that was, was with this particular topic. And I don't, uh, so what I want to do is in that segment, I got right into the emotional uh, uh, responses to seeing someone else's debt forgiven. But I thought since I had a little more time, it might be interesting to give you a little background on student loan debt forgiveness. And I know to those of you that are not in the U.S., this may be a little um, uh, on the boring side. It could be on the boring side <laughs> if you do live in the U.S. But uh, student loans are so common in the United States. I don't know what percent of students put themselves through college by borrowing, but it's a significant amount. I've had clients, more than one client, that had over $200,000 of student loan debt. And it can take a long time to get that debt paid off, uh, literally decades. So during the pandemic, um, President Biden did some uh, debt forgiveness um, on various types of of, um, student loans. And I'm, I'm not going to get into this. I'm, I'm looking at a list of all the student loans and it's just alphabet soup. But what I want to say is as of March of 2023, and that's the most uh, recent data I could find, over 500,000 people were forgiven 
$34.3 billion in student loan debt, which amounted to just about $69,000 a person. So that's, um, that's pretty significant. Um, uh, the president also came up with another uh, plan to uh, forgive student loan debt where he wanted to cancel up to $20,000 in student loan per person, per borrower. And this was challenged, taken to the Supreme Court, and in June of 2023, the Supreme Court blocked that ruling on a six to three vote. It appears to me some people did get some relief before it was blocked, but but not um, not very many. Um, the estimates were had that gone through, uh, just under 39 million people would have benefited from it, uh, which would have included people that borrowed on what's called a Pell Grant. And their estimates were that about 90% of debt forgiveness dollars would go to borrowers making under 75000 a year. The, uh, the Biden administration since then has come up with another plan to erase just under $40 billion in student loan uh, for those who borrowed on an income-driven repayment plan. It's called the IDR plan income-driven repayment. And the payments on the loan are set to your income. So uh, irregardless of what the uh, interest rate is and the, what the amortization payment, you know, usually if you borrow money uh, over 20 years, there's a set payment that will pay off the principal and the interest over those 20 years. But in this case, uh, it's all tied to income. So if you didn't have enough income to even meet the payment, the interest rate would just be added to the loan and it would be um, pushed ahead. Obviously, to uh, a borrower that had a low income, um, it could have taken 20, 25 years, even longer to try and pay off these plans. In some cases, if your income was low enough, you would never pay off the loan. So that one is is currently progressing. I understand it is not going to take a uh, act of Congress to um, to authorize that plan, as would the plan that was turned down by the Supreme Court. Um. So that's a, a little bit of the specifics on the debt forgiveness that's going on. There's all sorts of ways to get debt forgiveness on a number of other plans. There's a public service loan forgiveness, which forgives the remaining balance of a federal student uh, loan for a borrower who works full time for the government. Um, and you have to work at least 10 years and make 120 uh, payments. There's a teacher loan forgiveness plan where uh, a teacher can get forgiveness of up to $5,000 in uh, student loan debt if uh, they work or teach for more than five consecutive years. And on and on it goes. So that's some of the financial specifics. If you have a student loan, you may want to check into or refresh your memory on potential uh, uh, ways that you can get some forgiveness in, in your loan. But it does have to be a um, federal program. Uh, a private student loan, of course, would not qualify. So... So what about the person then who never never borrowed money um, to pay off their college debt, who worked their way through college? And we've talked about this before on the podcast, that according to a Berkeley study, students who worked their way through college 
have a 0.2% higher GPA than students who are, are given a, a full ride, and they tend to study more than students who are given a full ride. I don't know if in that full ride there was any borrowing uh, of money uh, or not. Um, but nevertheless, um, students can work um, uh, pretty hard to put themselves through college with no debt. And those that uh, have the, the luxury of parents paying for it um, are even more blessed, but not in GPA. <laughs> um, so, so if you're one of those students and you have uh, worked diligently to make sure you didn't have student debt, what are the emotions? What is the experience when you see um, hundreds of thousands of others that did borrow, um, getting some type, maybe all, of their student loan debt forgiven. Well, I came up with about 10 different emotions that I think a person can feel, and some of these may be surprising to you. The first one is happiness. Uh, the And this is all on the part of the person who paid off or did not borrow. Uh, they could just be genuinely happy for those uh, whose uh, debt has been forgiven. Happy that their well-being is being in improved. Uh, happy that this is a even a, viewed as a societal win, uh, even if it's not a personal one, by freeing up people to be able to uh, save more and spend more. The second emotion that could come up around this is one of generosity. Um, some folks are just really inspired to help other people. I think of uh, the Enneagram Type 2 that really is in service to uh, helping other people um, and uh, helping them improve their lives. So to look at this and view it as an act of kindness and generosity, um, supporting the policies that are eliminating the struggles of um, people that are bound with this type of debt um, can just fill them with a lot of generosity. It could make them, um, in itself it doesn't make them do anything, but it could lead to them feeling proud uh, about uh, the government spending, the taxes that they pay that may or may not contribute to that. The third emotion is one of empathy. So even if someone has never faced student loan debt, a person can still have uh, a lot of empathy, uh, a deep compassion for those who are benefiting from the loan forgiveness. Um, they could just really get how um, how much relief that it can bring to those individuals and their families, especially if they're struggling to make those payments every month. Another um, emotion would be sympathy. Um, just feeling uh, uh, sympathy recognizing the challenges uh, that people face accumulating a debt, especially those that are, say, low income and where their debt actually grows every month um, when, when they're on one of those uh, income replacement plans. Um, 
and just just really um, um, being um, happy, grateful uh, to see their hardships eased. So those are the more, um, I hate to call any emotion positive or negative because emotions just are. But those are the lighter emotions that I can see evoked by witnessing someone else's debt forgiveness. And for some of you, like I said, this may have been surprising to you because I have a hunch that there's um, a subset of you that um, probably went to more difficult emotions around this. So let's take a look at some of those. The fifth one would be insecurity. Um, So that forgiveness of another person uh, can stir feelings of uh, lack of security, especially if that person made different financial choices or had fewer opportunities because of the debt that they took on. Uh, They could easily second guess their own decisions and why did they take on this debt and wondering, you know, what or, or being very cognizant of what they missed out on potentially had they, um, not taken the debt, sorry, uh, if they had not taken that debt, um, and that this could have opened up more doors for them, um, especially when a portion of it gets repaid, right? I mean, basically that, that can be viewed as free money. So those uh, insecure feelings, if you're part of those, like kind of beating yourself up, why did I, why did I work so hard? Why did I, I make sacrifices to uh, not accumulate debt? And here's somebody else didn't make those sacrifices and they, they won, so to speak. Um, Those are definitely very valid Emotions, it's not a, I'm sure there's a critical part that could step up and say, well, you shouldn't um, be feeling this way. Um, You shouldn't be looking at the past. Let bygones be bygones. It's water under the bridge. But I just want to say, if you can relate to that, it's perfectly normal to feel a sense of unfairness. When we see others receive assistance that we didn't receive, that we potentially even rejected ourselves. Um, A sixth emotion could be, in a way, no emotion at all. Indifference. Um, Not everybody is going to have a strong reaction to debt forgiveness one way or the other. Um, not light feelings of happiness, not dark feelings of uh, maybe resentment. Uh, some folks just don't care. And I don't mean that, uh, that they should care. They just don't care. They don't have a, a reaction. I think this would be especially true if they've never been personally touched by student loan debt or don't know anybody who is struggling with student loan debt. Um, It's just a non-event to them. The seventh um, emotion is, which I just referred to, one of resentment. And this is an emotion that I know personally quite well. For those of you Again, familiar with the Enneagram, being a type one, uh, the passion, what what a type one struggles with is resentment. It's a form of anger turned inward. So uh, for this person who really struggled, they worked 20 hours a week 
to get the money to pay their student uh, tuition, to pay their housing. Um, they didn't go to a lot of the social activities. They really made a sacrifice to get through college and uh, very potentially viewed um, uh, those who did um, obtain loans as possibly taking the easy way out, uh, maybe being slackers. Um, for whatever reason, there's kind of can be a little bit of a moral high ground. And, and I'm not taking away that there's satisfaction uh, in doing that. But in viewing others now who's, who uh, took that easy way out, and again, from their viewpoint, and went ahead and borrowed the debt, and now a portion or all of it's being paid off. They could view that as getting a free pass. Um, and that and that resentment can really build. And again, it's um, understandable that a person would uh, feel resentment. It uh, could also be helpful to consider that loan forgiveness is a really well-intentioned policy designed to help people who have been overburdened for a lot of years. Um, but that alone may not really wipe out the resentment. It also may not help that there is a uh, upside to have never had that debt. And it's very possible that the person who didn't borrow actually may be ahead financially further than someone who did borrow, that they've been able to have the opportunity to save before others have. Um, but, uh, you know, I kind of digress in throwing some logic in there because it really doesn't matter. If a person's feeling resentment, um, that's what they're feeling and it's very valid. An eighth uh, emotion that could come up would be jealousy and envy. Um, and this can arrive when um, people when we compare ourselves to others and we're um, looking at, once again at the financial struggles that uh, I may have gone through to not borrow. And then we compare it to people who again um, decided to borrow and are being rewarded for that um, uh, decision. I mean, it could have been that a person worked their whole uh, high school <coughs> years to save money and then use that to pay for college. The other person maybe worked to save money too, but borrowed it all. And when the debt is paid off, the view can be, well, you know, they obviously they were money ahead. I, I wouldn't have had to work this hard. <laughs> So they can end up having, uh, having envy for those who received the assistance and really wished that they could have received similar help. Another emotion can be confusion. Uh, some people may not really know how they feel. Um, it, they could just uh, be a numb, potentially. Um, it just may be a lot to process. Um, they can have a lot of different emotions around it, uh, which quite frankly is pretty normal. I, I don't think that there's probably anybody who may feel any of these emotions, um, um, just <clears throat> singularly, uh, typically. We will have a part of us that feels happy for them and a part of us that's really angry uh, that they receive that. Uh, so while this can be perceived as confusion and there can be internal messages, it's what's wrong with me. 
you know, I don't know whether to be happy or sad. I have parts of me that that see it both ways and another part that's resentful. That is perfectly normal. And it's important uh, just to let all those those parts of you that are feeling that, that you get it. It makes sense. Uh, when when you further understand why they're happy, why they're sad, why they're resentful, it typically makes a lot of sense. And the final emotion, which may be the first emotion in uh, these days of uh, nationwide polarization in the U.S., is political or ideological alignment. Um, that means you can have an, a reaction to this that align with your political or ideological beliefs. Um, so some people support student loan forgiveness because they think it's an important step to uh, economic uh, equality. In so doing, it dresses inequality in the system. In the U.S., those would be tend to be um, more left-leaning or liberal-leaning. Others could oppose it because they believe it's unfair to taxpayers. This is not where I want my tax dollars going. They could look at it as a handout and have a, a moral um, a component to it. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the, the right word to where this will encourage people to borrow more. Like, heck, let me go ahead and borrow. I see everybody getting uh, their, their debt paid off. Uh, maybe down the road, I'll get lucky too. Why should I have to work so hard when there's a good chance that the government's going to pay off my debt. <clears throat> so those are very real, um, very real reactions. So um, as with uh, a lot of things, there's lots of different opinions around uh, the topic of debt forgiveness. And I want to, to say it's, it's more about emotions then it really is dollars. Uh, we've talked before about modern monetary theory and the fact if the uh, debt is in dollars, the government can afford to pay it. And I, I probably shouldn't have even wandered into that. But um, it, it's often, even with policies like this, not about the money. And sometimes we, we will make it about the money. But the emotions are so strong, you've got to step back and pause and say, is this really about the money? Especially when it's going down into resentment. So it's really important that we understand all of the emotions that can come with a policy like this. And understanding all of those emotions, we went through 10, is really important if we're going to discuss things like this in a civil and informed manner and have any type of productive discussions as a country. So, okay, thanks uh, for tuning in. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you again next week. Take care. Thanks for joining me, Rick Kaler, for another episode of Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. This is where I combine the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Remember, every financial behavior, whether it appears illogical to you or others, makes perfect sense when we understand the underlying beliefs, feelings, and thoughts. Sign up for my weekly blog at financialawakenings.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next episode.